From time to time, Rover vehicle specifications and trim levels are updated. This is an example of the very latest Rover 800 series, referred to as a 94 model year car, introduced in February of this year. Now from the outside, you probably won't notice any difference between the 94 model year cars and the ones you've been working on for the past 12 months or so. Take a closer look around the car once you're inside though, and you'll begin to notice the changes that have been made. Let's start with the switches. On the earlier 800s, you had one switch packed to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, housing the alarm LED, the cruise control switch, and the rear wiper and washer switches. And to the left of the steering wheel, another switch pack, housing the front and rear fog light switches. On the 94 model year cars, these have changed. The switch pack to the right has been redesigned. While it still continues to provide a location for the alarm LED, which is now more prominent, mounted on its own separate button, and still houses the cruise control switch. It now also houses the switches for the front and rear fog lights. Unlike the saloons, the 94 model year fastback cars, like this one, still make use of the inboard switch pack, where you'll now find the rear wiper and washer switches. And there's also a further change to the switch layout in this area on both fastback and saloons that don't have the automatic temperature control system fitted. Whereas before you had three switches, one for the heated rear window, one to select ram air and one to select recirculation, there are now only two. One for the heated rear window and a combined latching ram air and recirculation switch. This new switch assembly is directly interchangeable with the earlier three switch type and will be supplied as a service replacement part for both 94 and earlier Rover 800s. Now one other significant difference made to the driver controls involves a changing of the boot release and fuel flap release systems. Both of these systems are now electrical rather than mechanical, so you'll no longer find the two levers down to the right of the driver's seat as before. Instead, there's a single rocker switch mounted adjacent to the handbrake, which, when tipped forward, allows current to travel from the CCU on a purple and orange wire across the switch and out to the boot release motor on a purple and blue wire. And then, by tipping the switch back, you'll connect the same purple and orange feed from the CCU to a purple and green wire, which runs through to the fuel filler flap release motor. And it's worth noting that to maximise vehicle safety and security, the CCU will not provide a feed out on the purple and orange wire unless the car is stationary and the vehicle is unlocked. As a backup to the electrical system, you'll find an emergency mechanical release lever velcroed to the left-hand side luggage compartment liner. Just pull towards the back of the car to release the flap. Now, two other less obvious changes made to the 94 model year cars include, firstly, the introduction of full diversity on all derivatives to improve radio reception. This means you'll now have two coaxial leads on all cars. Secondly, a programmed wash wipe facility has been reintroduced on the front wipers, but unlike before, the customer is now able to choose whether to use this feature or not. To operate, the wash wipe feature, the vehicle must be stationary with the handbrake applied. Then carry out the following procedure in less than one and a half seconds. Turn the ignition to the auxiliary position, then press and hold in the rear fog light switch, turn the ignition on and then release the fog light switch. The CCU will chime once if you've completed the process correctly. By repeating the same procedure, you can move from the enabled condition back to the disabled condition. Now, two areas of car design currently receiving a considerable amount of attention from both the customer and the manufacturers alike are safety and security. In both these areas, the 94 model year cars differ from the earlier 800s. First of all, we'll look at safety. Most of you will already be familiar with the driver side airbag, which has been available on the 800 series range for well over a year and has now become a standard feature on all models. In addition to this, the passenger side airbag is now available as an optional extra on all models except the Coupe, Sterling and Vitesse, where it comes fitted as standard equipment. The passenger side bag, which has a larger volume than the driver's side, 160 litres compared to 60 litres, is located behind a burst panel on the fascia, which is embossed with the SRS identification. 
Apart from the additional airbag module, the twin airbag system is identical to the single bag system seen on the earlier models, with both modules connected to and controlled by a single SRS control unit mounted behind the center console. The service requirements remain much as before, involving a visual inspection of the airbag system at each major service and the replacement of the module at 10 years. The airbag diagnostic system is also as before. The SRS light in the instrument panel is used to warn the driver if a fault occurs in any part of the system. Now the diagnostic serial port connector used to connect microcheck to the system is still located behind the small trim panel to the right hand side of the centre console. The SRS manual has been updated to include details of the latest system and should be referred to for information whenever you're working on the system. Moving now on to security and another area where the 94 model year cars differ from the earlier models. The anti-theft systems fitted to the Rover 800 series models have always provided a very high level of security. On the 94 model year cars, the system continues to offer perimetric and volumetric protection pretty much as before, but now provides an enhanced engine immobilization feature designed to make it impossible to start the engine without the consent of the owner. Now, before we go any further, it's important to note that unlike before, the way you lock a 94 model year car will affect the type of protection provided by the alarm. If you slam lock the car, the alarm system will not be armed. But unlike earlier models, the LED will flash to act as a deterrent. If you lock the car by using the key in either of the front door, you will arm both the perimetric and engine immobilization parts of the system, but you won't arm the volumetric part. And finally, if you lock the car using one of the infrared transmitters, then the perimetric engine immobilization and volumetric protection will all be armed. And the way the vehicle is unlocked is just as important. If the vehicle was slam locked, then it can be unlocked using either the key or the transmitter. If the vehicle was locked using the key, then it can also be unlocked either using the key or the transmitter, which will disarm the alarm and remobilize the engine. Finally, if the vehicle was locked using the transmitter, it can be unlocked using either the key or the transmitter, but the engine will only be remobilized if the vehicle is unlocked using the transmitter. We'll now take a more detailed look at the 94 model year 820 system, which is slightly different to the systems used on the 94 model year V6 and diesel models. The components that make up the alarm system are pretty much the same as before. The CCU still controls the system, so it's still linked with the receiver unit, which is located just above the rearview mirror. It's linked with all the various door, bonnet and boot switches, with the ignition switch, with the ultrasonic sensor mounted at the top of the left-hand BC post, with the horns, with the alarm LED, and now it's also linked into the MEMS ECU. And as operation of the ultrasonic system, as far as whether it's armed or not, is now controlled by the way the vehicle's locked, there's no longer a need for the ultrasonic disable switch, which is fitted at the top of the right-hand BC post on earlier cars. So on 94 model year cars, you'll no longer find that fitted. So let's show you how the system works. For maximum security, the vehicle should be locked using one of the infrared transmitters. Providing the doors, boot and bonnet are secure, the interior lights will flash twice and the alarm LED will flash quickly for about eight seconds before it slows to flash once every second to confirm the alarm is armed. The perimetric protection and the volumetric protection are now armed, which operate as before. And you'll have armed the engine immobilization system, which is part of the enhanced system. Unlike the earlier models, where to provide engine immobilization, the CCU interrupts the earth path between the starter motor relay and ground, it now, through an additional link, sends a coded signal to the MEMS ECU. But now, in addition to this, engine running will also be inhibited, this time by the MEMS ECU, which will refuse to operate any engine management systems until the alarm is disarmed. This means it's now impossible for the thief to run the engine, even if he was able to bypass the crank inhibit, because none of the vital engine management circuits would operate. It won't be until the MEMS ECU has received a coded mobilization signal from the CCU that it'll be possible to run the systems again. Now, the mobilization signal will only be sent when the ignition is switched on and the alarm has been correctly disarmed.
And now, because the CCU communicates with the MEMS ECU through an additional connection via the coded mobilization signal, it's important to appreciate that the two units are now matched, and neither one can simply be changed or replaced with another unit. So, in cases where the system was armed using the transmitter, then the mobilization signal will only be sent when the vehicle is disarmed using the transmitter. And in cases where the vehicle has been locked with the key, the signal will be sent from the CCU to the MEMS unit when the vehicle is unlocked either with a key or with a transmitter. So, to sum up, if you lock the car with the key, then you can unlock the car with the key or the transmitter. But if you lock the car with the transmitter, you must unlock it with the transmitter, otherwise you won't remobilize the engine management system. Now there are one or two things you'll need to be aware of when operating and working on a 94 model year car. Firstly, it's important to remember that while the car is immobilized, the CCU will not send its mobilization signal to the MEMS unit and will inhibit engine crank using the usual method. Because the coded signal sent from the CCU to the MEMS unit is sent relatively slowly, well, in electronic terms, it's possible in some cases to crank the engine before the unit has actually received its full signal. If this happens, then the engine will initially run for about a second before it stalls. Secondly, in cases where, for example, you originally locked the vehicle using the transmitter and then unlocked it using the key, you disarm the parametric and volumetric sides of the alarm with the exception of the bonnet, which remains protected. At this time, you'll notice the central door locking will refuse to work, and you'll also notice the LED continue to flash. Finally, if you don't notice either of those, you'll be sure to notice the beep when you open the door. This would happen in cases where, for example, the owner locked the vehicle using the transmitter, then unlocked the vehicle using the key. These signals simply indicate that the MEMS unit is either not receiving or is not getting the correct signal from the CCU. In other words, it's remaining in the immobilized condition. If you do come across this problem, before you dive into an involved fault-finding process, you should first find out and make sure that the transmitter has been used to unlock the vehicle. It may simply be that the MEMS unit has simply not received a signal from the CCU to switch it back on. Now, like the earlier systems, the 94 model year system can be interrogated and checked using your microcheck, which brings us on to the second thing you should know. In addition to using your microcheck for testing the system and for conventional transmitter reprogramming, you'll also need it whenever you're fitting a replacement MEMS, ECU or CCU to the vehicle. That's because any new or indeed substitute MEMS unit will always refuse to respond to the coded signal sent to it by the CCU. So microcheck must be used to teach the ECU CCU to recognize the signal being sent. Likewise, if you just fitted a new CCU, you need to teach the MEMS unit what the new signal is. So you must always use your microcheck to teach the replacement MEMS unit to accept the signal sent by the CCU. And there's one further point. You may be wondering what would happen if the vehicle is locked using the transmitter and then the transmitter is lost. Well, assuming you have a door key, then you'll be able to unlock the car and disarm the alarm. But what you won't be able to do is remobilize the engine. That is, unless you have what's called the key access code number, which is the only way the engine can be remobilized in this situation without the use of a transmitter. This number, which will be a combination of four digits, will be issued exclusively to the new owner of the car when they first collect the vehicle, so it should be kept extremely safe. Incidentally, the key code number will not be held on record by Rover, although you can use microcheck to obtain the key access code number by interrogating the CCU. I'll now demonstrate the procedure you'll need to use if it becomes necessary to remobilize the engine using the key access code number. You'll need to start with the car in the locked condition, then unlock the car using the key in the driver's door as normal. Open the door, you'll get a beep, and you'll notice the LED continues to flash. Close the door, insert the key, and move it to the unlock position. So that's anti-clockwise, the number of times indicated by the first digit of the key code. We'll say twice. You'll then need to turn the key to the lock position, that's in the clockwise direction, by the number of times indicated by the second number in the key code. We'll say three. Turn the key to the unlock position to correspond with the number of times indicated by the third digit and finally back to the lock position for the fourth digit. When you've done that, unlock the vehicle by moving the key to the unlock position, which should, if you've entered the key code correctly, unlock the car and stop the LED flashing and remobilize the engine.
If you know you've made a mistake when entering the code, then opening and closing the driver's door will reset the system ready for another attempt. If you make a mistake when you've entered the code, or you've entered the wrong code, then the mislock will sound, and you'll have to try again. So that's the 94 model year 820 system, pretty much the same as the earlier systems as far as the parametric and volumetric sides go, but with the enhanced engine immobilization feature, which as we've seen, uses the CCU to switch the MEMS ECU on and off. Now the alarm fitted to the V6 and diesel models is slightly different. On these models, instead of the CCU sending a signal to the MEMS unit, which of course isn't fitted in either of these cases, it sends its signal to an immobiliser unit, which in both cases is attached to the CCU. This unit acts like the MEMS unit does on the 820s, responding to the CCU's signal preventing the engine from starting while the alarm is armed. And it also features an identical key code backup system in case a transmitter is lost. And to ensure the level of security provided by all the 94 model year cars is not compromised, you'll not find any of the associated wiring diagrams relating to engine immobilization shown in any of the paper documents. And you'll also find that the wiring to the immobilizer unit fitted to the V6 and diesel models is purposely not color coded in any way. So, we've shown you how the 94 model year cars differ from the earlier 800s and what the alarm system does and how it does it.